Are you tired of the same old details? Do you want to put those classy figures into something more elegant? How about something like this? Well, you best put seatbelts on your ears, because I'm about to show you how to do this step by step and more. So first, we need to ask ourselves, what makes a good display cabinet? Three things, actually. Space, lighting, and dust guard. And the good news is, is that 80% of what we need here is buyable on the IKEA online store. So let's get right into it. From IKEA, we're going to need to order one Billy Oxberg, one Steyr Bar remote control, two 30 watts track free, two 4 Neymar power cables, and 12 Norfly 67 centimeters LED strips. And what you'll need from Amazon or a store near you is a packet of zip ties of any color, three one centimeter cable clips, and also some five millimeter ones if you can, 12 rubber grommets with a five millimeter entry, a double multi-plug, and five Finally, a roll of dust guard foam tape, preferably the thinnest one you can find. You won't need much tools for this job, and in terms of power tools you'll really only need a wall drill and also a grinder, but we'll get into that a bit later. So once you receive or collect your Billy Oxberg, you'll have it in six long boxes, being two Billys and four Oxberg doors. Myself personally, I thought it was a whole piece, but it's actually two Billys and four Oxberg doors slapped in one bundle. So if you already have two Billy bookcases, you'll just need to order four Oxberg doors. Once you have your Billys, start building them up and make sure you ask someone to help you, and it shouldn't take more than 30 minutes each. I did these on my own in a very limited amount of space, but it honestly wasn't too bad. Being IKEA, the instructions are very straightforward and easy to comprehend. So, once you've built them up to part 11 of the instructions, you'll need to skip page 12, 13 and 14. We have to skip these parts for now because we need access to those areas later. So make sure that both your billies are nice and stable in a corner and cannot fall backwards or forwards. You'll need the shelf blanks for this next part, so just keep them safely nearby. You've made it to part two. Well done. Now gather your 12 LEDs and the eight Billy shelves from part one because we are going to fixate the Norflies to the Billy shelves. What you'll find inside every Norfly pack is a pack of screws with some double-sided tape strips, an installation bar to hold the LED lights, two bar lowering pieces, and the instructions. Make sure you slide the switch button from auto to on on each of these 12 lights so that you don't get confused later. Now you won't need much tools here as we'll only be measuring and putting in two screws for each shelf. Now grab a shelf and place your Norfly installation bar on top. Make sure the shelf side hooks are looking upwards and that the shelf front facing you is the coated edge part of the wood. We want these lights underneath and at the front edge of each shelf for the best efficiency and aesthetic results. Now to center our bar, we need to measure the length of the shelf minus the length of the bar divided by two. And that gives us 18 centimeters. So we'll use that 18 centimeters between the bar and the shelf on each side to center it. Now before our next measurement, make sure that the bar grips are facing you and the coat edge part of the shelf. So for the height of the bar and the shelf, I personally recommend leaving one centimeter between the bar grips and the shelf edge, and you'll understand why just in a moment. Once you've got it positioned, make a dot with your pencil, move the bar up, and slightly engage the screw to make the insertion a little easier. Now if you've got one of these to do your screws, it will come in handy right now. So replace the bar on top of the two screw insertion points, and go right ahead and lock it in. Next, grab the Norfly LED and insert it in the installation bar as per the instructions. It will be hard to move it around afterwards, so try and make sure that the sensors are centered between the two middle grips of the bar. Then slowly push it down like this in phases, and don't worry about the resistance because you will need to force a little here. You should hear two clicks when this step is complete. Now, measure each side of the Norfly LED to make sure that you have 4.5 cm space on both sides. And if you do, that means your no-fly light is perfectly centered. Congratulations! 
Oh, and here's the reason why I recommend to put one centimeter between the installation bar and the front shelf edge. It makes it look very clean and professional, and it also ensures that the LED lights fully light up the entire shelf block. Now, if your measurements were slightly off, please don't attempt to remove the Norfly light unless you have a replacement one. For the sake of the video, I bought 13 Norfly lights instead of 12, just because I saw comments online where people struggled to remove them. I called IKEA and followed their exact instructions, which were honestly not that helpful. In fact, they were clueless. There is no true guide on how to remove these lights once they are engaged. Anyway, here's how it played out. As you can see, it just really didn't go well. The screw ended up giving in, and the installation bar actually got bent. I tried with a series of tools to re-straighten it, but I, I just couldn't. So I was certainly glad that I had my extra one. Moving on, remember the bully pages that we skipped earlier? Well, we're going to do page 13 before moving forward. All this consists of doing is placing the shelf holders into the sides of the billy. You'll have noticed that you have plenty of options of where you want your shelves to be. So you can follow the IKEA example by counting the holes between each shelf, or you can just simply do it your own custom way, or even better, you could do it the fig critic's way, which I'll demonstrate right away. Obviously, your cabinet will not look like this at this stage, but having the shelves and lighting already fixated makes this part much much easier to comprehend. So let's get started. From the top of the cabinet, count six holes down and put in shelf A. From shelf A, count eight holes down and put in shelf B. From shelf B, count eight holes down and put in shelf C. From shelf C, count six holes down and put in shelf D. From shelf D, count seven holes down and put in shelf E. From shelf E, count six holes down and and now we're out of shelves. So I recommend doing this for both cabinets because this will allow you to put a larger variety of figures between each shelf. Now to make room, please put all the Northline shelves into the billy as you progress because you'll have a lot of packaging around you. And I'm sure you would have noticed by now that four of the Northline lights will have to be installed directly on the billy, top of both cabinets and middle of both cabinets. It will be a bit awkward because these planks are not removable at this point, but heck, you know, I, I did these alone, so with some help, I know you'll be absolutely fine. It will take you at least a good two hours to complete part two in full, and you'll definitely be grateful when you've attached your final or fly. So when you're done, it should look something like this. And that means you're ready to move on to the next part. Now that we've got our shelves and lights in, we need to process those cables. By that I mean we need to get those Norfly cables from this side to back there. And naturally, we want these cables to be fed to the back nice and straight. So we need to measure how far the center of these cables are from the cabinet side. Now you may think that the 4.5 centimeter measurement from earlier is what we'll be using here, but no, we need 4.5 eight centimeters here because we are measuring from the middle of the cable and not the side of the north fly light or the cable. We want to drill exactly where our pencil mark is and at 4.5 centimeters the hole will be slightly to the left and we want that hole landing right in front in a straight path from the base of those cables to the cabinet wall. So once you've got your measurement, sharpen your pencil and place your ruler against the left side and wall of the cabinet. Make a dot at 4.8 centimeters if you are using my measurements and leave about one centimeter from the top of each shelf. The height doesn't have to be perfect, just don't mark the dot against the top of the shelf with not even a millimeter of space. Now we need our drill and a wood drill bit that is big enough for our cable plug to go through. Wood drill bits are different from the ones that you use on walls, so make sure you use one of these for the billy wall. After testing a couple, and although being a tight fit, size 6 was perfect in my opinion. When you are ready, place the drill tip over the pencil mark and start drilling. You can't see it here, but I am actually holding the drill with one hand and putting pressure behind the billy wall with my other hand. This is because the billy back is very thin and delicate. Make sure you don't put your hand behind the billy where you are drilling though, 
We definitely don't want to hold it in your hand. So once you've done all of them, they should look like this. And that means we are finally ready to pass our cables through. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This next step is very difficult. Because although our drill bit is the right size, it's still a tight fit. So you will have to wiggle the cable plugs through here patiently. It will work and go through after forcing a little whilst wiggling. I had one hand wiggling and pushing from the front and one hand wiggling and... Uh, Wig wiggling and pulling from the back. <laughs> and hey, they all went through eventually. So just be patient and take your time. It's worth it. Ah yes, and make sure there are no knots in your cables before passing them through. This happened to me and the plug is honestly okay to get through from the front, but it's not okay to get through from the back. Once you've done both cabinets, it should all look something like this. After the drilling and cable dragging, it's going to be pretty dusty. So grab a dusting cloth and give each shelf a good wipe before our next part. Now, we are going to use 12 5mm entry rubber grommets to cover up our cable holes so that it looks nice and tidy. Why 12? Because we have 12 no-fly lights and we made 12 holes. But we first have to do some modifications on these grommets. And what you'll need is a rotary grinding tool, which is optional, or a precision knife, which is mandatory, or even better, both of them. You also need some kind of screwdriver or metal bar that fits in the entry of the rubber grommet to prevent it from moving too much when you're grinding it. So you'll actually only need this if you are using a rotary to retool. And of course, you'll also need some grommets. You might want to use a mask during this procedure if you are using the grinder. Make sure that your rotary tool uses the silicone carbide grinding stones. I think this is the best tip to use for grinding grommets. The precision knife can be any kind, as long as it's sharp. Just be very careful when using this, as it will cut through anything that's not fully solid, like a warm knife through butter. And as mentioned earlier, to hold the grommet if you are using the rotary tool, use either a screwdriver or an IKEA screwdriver bar that I have here for example, very handy, that I actually got from some other furniture packs. But as long as the grommet does not move around too much, you can use whatever you want. On your rotary tool, speed one or two will be fine for this procedure. So first, grab your rubber grommet and your precision knife and start slicing off with your precision knife the ugliest side of the rubber grommets. Most of the time they will look identical, but sometimes you have a side that's better than the other. So try to keep the best looking side intact because that is the side we are going to be putting in the front of our holes. Now, once you've cleared up most of it, you can either start grinding around the edges with the rotary tool to make it look nice and clean and smooth, or you can keep using just a precision knife to make it as smooth as possible, just like that, because you don't have to worry too much about the slice side of the grommet because it won't be visible at all. And once you've done a few, I mean, you'll, you'll get better and better at it, but it should look something like this. So this is the shape on one side that we are looking for. Pretty simple, eh? Again, if you are using solely the precision knife to do this part, just be very careful not to cut yourself. Take your time and make sure there are no distractions around you. As you can see, I like going that extra mile, although this part of the grommets will not be visible on the cabinets, because the time and effort you put into something does give it more value. And like the old saying goes, if you take care of it, it will take care of you. Once you've done it for 12 grommets, set them aside and grab that precision knife again and one by one, slice straight through on only one side of the grommet. Make sure that when you start your slice, you are not starting it from the clean side of the grommet, but the edited side of the grommet. It just makes it much easier for your precision knife to cut through in a straight line, because that is what we're looking for here. As you can see, the cuts are not visible at all when you've done it straight. And even if it's not perfectly straight, they will still won't be visible, but it's still better so just to get that little extra invisibility. You must be wondering why we are doing this. Well, it's because we need to do this so that we can put the grommets over the cables without taking the cables out. So why don't we put the grommets in before passing the cables? That's because our cable tips are far too large for the grommets to go through. And if we did want to do that, we would have to use an extra large grommet, which would beat the whole purpose of concealing it. So this light hidden slice on the side of the grommet really fixes all our problems here. Now, one by one, put your grommets on like so and rotate them in both directions simultaneously so that the part that we modified behind the grommet just slides in. If it's still too thick and it doesn't want to go in, just go back to your precision knife or rotary tool and take some more of the slice parts and just try again. And when you got them all to fit, it should look something like this. Isn't that lovely? Now you're ready to move on to the next step. Is this how you're feeling right now? 
Well, go grab yourself a treat and here's our little motivational video. I don't think you have any idea how fast I really am. Ah! <laughs> Now that I've got your attention back, let's get it all done. In this next step, you're going to need the Stybar remote control with two AAA batteries that are not included. Welcome to fucking. The two Tread Fry drivers and Fornima cables. And you'll also now need those cable clips and zip ties that we spoke about at the beginning. Now before we do anything, I'm going to explain something about the Northline lights, Tread Fry drivers and cables that I had to learn the hard way. Originally, I bought one 30 watt Tread Fry that has nine Northline light entries and one 10 watt Tread Fry that has three Northline light entries, which adds up to a perfect 12 Northline light entries. And instead of buying two Fornima wall plugs, I bought one Fornima wall plug and one Fornima bridge cable to connect the drivers. So the plan was to connect nine Northline lights to the 30 watt Tread Fry since it has nine slots and three Northline lights to the 10 watt Tread Fry since it has three slots. So all our lights should fit perfectly. Then I put the Fornima bridge cable between the Tratfry drivers and with the Fornima power cable I solely fed the 30 watt Tratfry driver to the wall socket. I turned it all on and well, they didn't all work. Nine of them were working and three of them were not. I tried switching them around in the entries of the Trout Fry drivers. I then realized that the three Northfly lights that were originally not working were now working, but the three working Northfly lights that took their position stopped working. I scratched my head for a while and then suddenly a light bulb came on. I realized that the two Trout Fry drivers combined gave out a total of 40 watts, being 30 plus 10. But my lights are 4 watt each and 4 times 12 equals 48. But if we take off three Northfly lights which removes 12 watts and brings us down to 36 watt instead between our Trout Fry drivers, but only 9 lights, it was working perfectly. This would have not been a problem if I had used the size under the 67 Northfly lights, being 42 centimeters, which only used 2.5 watts. But since I needed the size up, I didn't realize that it would bring me over the combined driver's total watt. So while we're at it, here's the working plan and circuit for our cabinets. What we must do to make it work perfectly instead is... And that's it, replacing the 10 watt Trout Fry with the 30 watt one and equally dividing the North Fly lights between them, we are good to go because we now have 60 watt between our Trout Fry drivers, which is more than enough since what we need is only 48. Now these drivers do tend to heat up a little. So instead of using the Fornima bridge between the drivers and solely just using one Fornima power cable to the wall socket, I decided to buy another Fornima power cable so that they both are independent of each other. And then all I did is plug in a multi-plug into the wall socket so that I can share that instead. You can still just use the Fornima bridge between both drivers and the one Fornima power cable for both of them. But for my own peace of mind, I prefer to separate them. Now, before we install our Tratfy drivers onto the Billy cabinets, let's pair them both up to the Stybar remote control. So there are two methods to doing this. First one is, plug your Tratfy driver into the wall plug to give it power, and all you need to do is make sure the position of the Tratfy driver is on this side so that this connection symbol is facing upwards and facing you. Then, grab your Stybar remote control and check for the same connection symbol below the batteries. So there should be a button underneath it with the symbol on top. Now, now all you need to do is make sure the Stybar remote control light is facing you. Then hold down that button for approximately 10 seconds and did you see those two little light flashes at the end? That means that our Stybar remote control has successfully paired itself with the Tradfy driver. Now the other method is the exact same way, but in addition, all we need to do is plug in all our Northfly lights into the Tradfy drivers. So since we have 12, remember to split them evenly between both. So that means splitting them 6-6 six, six, to stay below the wattage cap that we discussed earlier. And now instead of looking at the Stybar remote control, you just need to look at the Northfly lights that are already in the Billy cabinets. They will blink slowly into rapidly blinking as the Stybar bar originally did. But just remember to do each Tradfy driver separately. Once you've paired both of your Tradfy drivers with the Sty bar, go ahead and test them out. It's a pretty satisfying feeling if I'm being honest, being able to control these lights from a distance. Now isn't that royalty? 
Once you've had your fun, disconnect your Tradfire drivers from the wall sockets and the no-fly lights from the Tradfire drivers, because we are going to install them on top of the billies, one on each. So the drivers need three screws, and luckily for us, we have plenty of screws remaining from those no-fly light packages, so you can actually use these. Perhaps some rounded-headed screws are better instead? Like, that's what I used, but whatever you got to hand at this point, as long as it's fairly small. Ah, yes! And while we're at it, these little red stickers that you have been unpacking at each Norfly package, these are given as an option if you want to put them behind your cables against or above to attach them to a surface. I don't recommend using them personally because they honestly do not stick that well and you will be constantly pushing your cables against them and that's not the kind of job we're doing here. We're doing something that's built to last. So now, remember how we did the math to find out what distance we needed on each side of the Norfly bar to center it? Well, we need to do the same thing here with the roof of the billy cabinet to center the Tradfi drivers in the middle. With this next part being on a small ladder, I wasn't able to document it as much as some of the other parts, but that's okay, because by now you understand what we are doing to center it. So to make it easy, measure between 25 to 26 centimeters from each side of the cabinet to the side of the Tradfi driver, whichever side you're commencing with, and then between 5 to 6 centimeters from the back of the billy cabinet to the Tradfi driver. Now the reason I say between these measurements is because it doesn't have to be perfect as it won't be visible. As long as you stay between those measurements I gave you, the Trad Fry drivers will stay invisible but will remain easy to access to check the temperature, move the cables around and all that kind of stuff. Now once you've got it in place, grab a pencil, make your pencil dots and go ahead and pre-insert those screws where you made your pencil points and then seal in the deal. And repeat this for the other one on top of the other billy. Now we are finally going to use these cable clips. For the big cable clip, just make sure that the nail does not go through the entire thickness of the top of the billy because if it does you will need to get another nail for it. And just remember, the nail will stop here when inserted and not here. Then run your trunk fry entry cable to the side heading to the back of the billy cabinet. Hold that turn with the cable and put in two cable clips on top of the cabinet. I think most people would prefer using the smaller size cable clip to keep things very tight here. I decided to use one small one at the exit of the truck fry that really holds down the cable and one big one at the end of the cable turn so that it gives it some flexibility at the back. Now pull your no fly light cables through entirely and plug them all into the trad fry driver entries of that cabinet. Remember to do this for both of your cabinets, six no flies per cabinet. So six cables per trad fry. And after that, both of your billy cabinets should look something like this from the back. But we are not done yet. Grab a large cable clip and take the center of all those hanging no fly cables, insert them into the cable clip whilst nailing the cable clip at approximately the center top of the cabinet to help balance the weight of these cables on both sides so that there is less stress on the hanging trad fry driver entry. And finally, grab some zip ties, put one here, here, and here. Afterwards, it should look something like this. And that means you're ready to move on to our final part. Before we can move forward, we need to finish the final page that we skipped of the billy cabinet, being adding the two cabinet wall attachments to ensure that the cabinets do not tilt forward or backwards for that matter. I'm sure now you understand why we couldn't do these steps right at the beginning because we would have not been able to do some other important steps afterwards. Okay, so when it comes to this part, there really isn't much I need to explain to you here. These two attachments do not even need any form of measurements. Just do your best to balance them out like I've done it over here, just so you know if there was some form of emergency and they were to tilt forward that the weight is fairly distributed and also make sure just to follow the basic instruction in the ikea billy instruction book this part is really not difficult but just make sure someone helps you to do it as well oh and one more thing if you have any electric tape slice off a piece and put one piece on each of the trad fry cable entries just so that it doesn't swing around when you are pushing and moving the cabinets against the wall we don't want those things to get crushed on the side so it should look something like this when you attach them to the walls you can now plug in your Phonema power cable in each of your Tradfry drivers. Oh, and I just want to say again, I think it's awesome to have these Tradfry drivers on top of the cabinets, hidden away like this, but still accessible so we can check the temperature. Alrighty, so let's attach our Oxford doors. This step is very simple. Follow the IKEA instructions by first preparing your billy cabinets, and then also follow the ones to prepare your Oxford doors like so. Thank you. 
Now there is one part in this process that's kind of a pain. You will have to adjust this and this quite a bit to allow both your Augsburg doors to close fully and minimize the gap between those Augsburg doors as much as possible. Because it will help to keep dust out of the cabinets in addition to our final step. Once you're done, it should look something like this. Oh my oh my, isn't that just... <laughs> Before our last step, give it all one big clean. I don't like cleaning things. Yes you do. Now we're going to install our dust guard strips. This isn't a long process and you only need the following tools to complete it. Before we dig in, cut off a small piece from your dust guard strip roll and bring it between the Oxford doors. You'll see that in some areas it goes in perfectly and slides, but in others it doesn't. The gap between these doors are not consistent all the time because the wood is just like that. So follow this previous step to the best of your ability to make sure that that gap is as sealed as it possibly can be. Okay, let's get started. We are going to start with the top of the cabinets because we have a large gap here that needs sealing. Pass your small trial strip that we cut earlier along that gap to make sure there is enough space on every centimeter for it to go in. Now measure from the side of the billy to the bumper pad you inserted earlier on the Oxford doors because we don't want these strips going in front of those bumper pads because otherwise the doors will no longer close fully. This measurement will vary depending on where you did put your rubber bumpers but it should land around 36.5 centimeters but double check this just in case. So, measure, mark and slice your measured piece, give it a little courtesy positioning before sticking it in there, and if you're happy with it, go right ahead. And it should look something like this. And as you can see, no more light is escaping from the top, which means no more dust can get in from the top either. So repeat this process for the other side and on both cabinets. Let's do one more area. Look at this gap here. We can't have that now, can we? Let's fill up that bad boy. Put your tape inside the billy cabinet to measure up to the bubble. As you can see here, I land at almost a perfect 36.5 centimeters. So measure, mark and slice. Repeat it for the other side, including the other billy cabinet. And voila! How awesome does this look? It's barely visible, but if someone does happen to see it, I think it actually looks pretty cool looking, eh? It looks like it belongs here, and I like the whole texture of these strips as well. A little bit foamy and a little bit shiny. Pretty cool. Well done, well done indeed! You've done it! Give yourself a round of applause. Conclusion, we now have a pair of gorgeous display cabinets. Now to finish off with a flourish, here's some recordings and images of the cabinets in different lightings, angles, and with different scales and types of figures. Oh, and one last thing. It would really help us out if you were to share this with just one friend or family member to support the growth of our channel. And of course, feel free to subscribe. I hope you enjoyed yourself and had fun. And I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, ciao. You may go me.
有你。